On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you to Rybrook, New York for a tour of Erin Corrin's home. She's the co-founder of Curated Nest, and with the help of her business partner, Lena Galveo, they used their keen eye for casual luxury and comfortable living. Erin and Lena have transformed this storybook tutor into a beautiful home for Erin's family of four. From the cozy living space with exposed beams to the stylish, fully renovated kitchen, Erin's home is a place where history blends with family and imagination. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Lena. And I'm Erin. Welcome to my house in Rybrook, New York. Come on in. Hi, I'm Erin Corrin, and welcome to my home in Rybrook, New York. I'm an interior designer with Curated Nest, and... Hi, I'm Lena Galveo. I'm also an interior designer at Curated Nest. We are the co-founders, and we started off as friends who started a business together in 2016. So I was previously living in New York City, and I felt like every winter my husband and I would take the tour out of the city and see if we wanted to stay or go. Every year we came back um, missing the city and feeling like we just weren't ready. And then one time we, we came up, we saw the outside of this house. My face was basically pressed against the, the window of the car door and I was like, that's my house. We came back to the city and it just didn't feel the same and we knew that that was it. And then I came back from a two week vacation and Aaron, we get to our office, which was in Brooklyn at the time, and she told me I'm moving. And I'm like, what? In two, I leave you alone for two weeks and you decide to up and leave the city? So it, it was a, a big surprise for me, but really exciting that Erin found her dream home. So when I saw the house, I always knew that if something was gonna get me out of the city, it had to be something really special and unique. This is a really interesting house because it's not just a tutor, it's a storybook tutor. So it has the round turret, the slate roof, the Juliet balconies, and it just felt incredibly special and one of a kind. And it just felt like a magical place to raise my children. But the downside is it was actually on the market for over a year. It was the house that everyone was scared of, essentially. It had a uh, pink shag carpet, it had stars stenciled on the wall, uh, deep red paint everywhere. I think there was like peppers and tile. So where other people came and saw the house listing, basically ran off screaming, I came in and I just, it was love at first sight. Cause I knew that I could really put my spin on it and make it something special. We've met over nachos. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so we were living in Brooklyn at the time in the neighborhood of Park Slope, um, very family oriented neighborhood. We had just had our first babies. Our kids were six, nine days apart. Yeah, nine days yeah. apart. And we were six, week, six weeks into being new moms, absolutely terrified. I go to a, uh, I can't remember, it was off of Flatbush. A mom meetup. But it was like a mom meetup yeah. for everyone with January babies from 2015. And Lena was there with her mom and we just totally hit it off. Yeah, it was it was so cool. We were sitting across from each other. What are the chances? It was with the babies in the with, majority. <laughs> the babies <laughs> attached. We're eating nachos. You know, what do you do? What do you do? Oh, I'm an interior designer. I'm, oh, an, I'm interior an interior designer. <laughs> yes. We got so excited. From then, you know, we became mom buddies, interior design buddies regular buddies, you know, and then we decided to start a business together because um, we really felt like we shared a similar philosophy and, you know, we were friends and it just felt like a really wonderful collaboration. So we're currently in our formal living room. This is the main room that you really walk into right from the foyer. So this is the first space that the guests really see as they enter the house. We really wanted to maintain the exposed beams that are on the ceiling that are original to the house. That was really important for Lena and myself that we wanted to stay true to the overall style while still incorporating a, um, a look that is just like a more tailored, more updated design aesthetic for modern living with a family. 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I love Erin's living room because it feels so incredibly cozy, it has all these warm colors and tones and textures that are just so inviting and just make you feel comfortable. The other thing that has uh, a specific Tudor aesthetic is it's usually it's known as like very dark homes. So we wanted to make sure to keep the overall uh, color palette very light, very neutral, very airy but then we still wanted to have a lot of contrast. So we picked a lot of pieces that still maintained that deeper, richer feel, whether it's a stained or if it's like a black painted piece of furniture. A lot of textures and textiles was really important to us. Um, this was one of the first pieces that I purchased back in 2017. This is kind of one that I really consider to be like the heirloom piece. And it really helps to hold all of our holiday decor, but everything is nice and concealed and clean, so no one knows what's hidden behind here, that it's really all my holiday decor. Um, and even this piece right here, this is really, it looks like a nice formal sideboard, but inside has all of the games. So my kids really, they come in and they you know, play Monopoly and checkers and everything has a place for it to go to, but then when the doors close, no one would be the wiser. So it still feels like a very formal living room, which is nice. So the other thing as far as the space goes is because it is the formal living room and it is a, a relatively smaller house in terms of suburban homes, is we wanted to make sure that this room can really function for multiple purposes. So while we can entertain, have people over, whether it's you know kids or adults, our kids can still be in the space. So when we bought the home, it had a lot of architectural details and we wanted to really implement the use of all the architecture as much as possible. So where they had a built-in cabinet in the, the archway, there's actually a hidden TV behind. So if we wanted to use the space for you know, watching movies, we can use the space even though it's a rarity. Um, we also have a gas burning fireplace that the previous owner put in, but maintaining the original um, mantle and hearth. And so you know everything here is original from over 130 years ago. And so I, I'm very much an introvert. I like to just kind of cozy up on a chaise lounge. I read probably 200 to 300 books a year. Um, so I definitely wanted to have a chaise lounge, which my dog Piper is making the most of currently. Uh, she speaks my language. So, you know, even though it's like it is a living room, there has moments where it's like one person can be in here or, you know, a family of eight could be in here. And one thing we notice a lot about people who move from the city to the suburbs, there's a lot of new developments, a lot of new homes or homes that were built in the 90s, and they just don't have this level of character. So you see like all of the walls are plaster. So you see this texture here, and you can see that the walls are also curved at the edges. That's a really common feature of Tudor homes which we love. And so we really wanted to embrace that and highlight it and not hide it or straighten anything out and really just let it be what it was meant to be architecturally. So because a Tudor house can be kind of characterized as like it's very heavy, it's very serious, you know, a big thing with Lena and I is we wanted to have some areas of whimsy. We always want to have in all the houses we design like that one unexpected item of like, I didn't see that happening. Uh, so we really went back and forth on what that moment would be. So we did put in um, wall-mounted plug-in sconces that has a really cool intricate arm. Um, both of them also articulate, so it just has like a really nice aesthetic. It's almost uh, artistic, um, and it just kind of like creates something that's just a little unexpected and a little whimsical in the home. This sofa is just like a nice, like deep, comfortable sofa with a variety of pillows uh, from one of our wholesalers. We felt like it framed out the, the window really nicely. It has a really cool curve along the back. So this would be one of the pieces of furniture that we would categorize as a little bit more of like the updated traditional aesthetic, whereas the coffee table has this flat reeded detail um, that goes around, which is like a timbre. Um, and this would be like a little bit more contemporary. So we like how the two styles balance each other really nicely, but it's still a really big, chunky piece of furniture that grounds all the different seating groups together. I think the big thing as far as this room goes is architecture is really the focal point. That's really what speaks. If we design a house that does not have a lot of architecture, then 
we might add wallpaper, we might add contrast color of trim, but in here, there was so much interesting architecture between like the curved fireplace, the beams on the ceiling, that we didn't feel like we really needed to add much. It really spoke for itself. So really it's more about layering, adding those textures, bringing the elements that makes, you know, what would be like a big oversized room with heavy details, feel a little bit more warm and inviting. So that was a big thing that Lena and I worked on is having those moments where it doesn't feel like it's a serious room, but one that's like really comfortable that even your dog can take a nap on. Yeah, I mean, this chase is the best. It, it literally gives you a hug when you lay down in it. And this texture is not something you would expect in a formal living space. It's, it's kind of like a shearling wool and it's just so cozy. It's a visual texture as well as a tactile texture. And that's a, just a really lovely combination. And it kind of makes you remember the space a little more. You have that like tactile memory, which I really love. Um, so texture is really important in the way that we layer our designs. And I think Aaron and I are both very much in favor of adding lots of texture in all of our projects. And it just worked out really successfully here. As the homeowner, everyone always thinks like, oh, like you're an interior designer. Like it just must come like so easy for you. But designing your own home is just like a whole different animal especially when you have a very specific architectural style that I know that we could have just been like commit to, you know, the Tudor, very traditional look, but I would have gotten tired of it over time. So it was really important to incorporate the team and put together just like a really nice cohesive design that felt even fresh for me. Like I actually felt like one of our clients. It was really nice. <laughs> I was like, you guys treat me so well. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I mean, Erin would do some work on it and then we would do some work on it and show her what we, the things we had found and how we were yeah. thinking of putting it together and eventually we, we got to the final result. But the, there's things that like are super contemporary in here, like these side tables um, and the piano bench or piano ottoman that you wouldn't think to expect in a Tudor home. But the piano is a really important thing for us personally because it's not just like, oh, it's a formal living room, so you should put in a, a piano. I actually, I, I play piano. So it was really important for me to kind of have that moment because I grew up with a baby grand uh, that was like 150 years old and I couldn't bring that up from, from Atlanta. So I actually found this piece, which is a spinet uh, from, the, from the 60s. And it's, I actually found it in an estate sale because I didn't want to have like a really heavy, bulky, upright piano. So I love the fact that it has the brass legs and it has the little brass details with the music stand. So, you know, it has a really nice moment in the corner. And my kids will sit here, they'll play piano. My son plays violin. So we're able to really have it be like a music room area. Um, but it feels still formal and in keeping with a formal living room moment. So with mirrors, it really does reflect natural light. Um, the fact that you have um, the French doors that go out to a balcony, we really wanted to mimic the two sides. So having a piano that's a heavier black material, we wanted to uh, make it more symmetrical on the other side. And we felt because we had a piece of art on one side, we didn't want to be too matchy. So we love this mirror that actually has a hide material, but it's a really nice, like thick textured detail that then ties in the spots over to the ottomans. So it has a nice, you know, wayward of moving your eye around the different areas of the room. So a fun designer idea for you to do in your own home if you don't have the time or the wherewithal to hire an electrician to install beautiful sconces, you can always get the plug-in variety. Nowadays, a lot of the sconces that are hardwired also come in plug-in form. So that is a great and easy way to update your home decor with lighting. And lighting is kind of like a sculpture, especially in the case of this one. So um, highly recommend that tip if you're in a pinch. So it's, it's really interesting. Designing your own house is completely different than designing for a client. It's so personal and there's just endless options. And especially being a designer, you like so many different styles. So the first thing that I did is I ran to Lena and I was like, we're doing this together. <laughs> it's really nice because we can work together to create an interesting spin where it doesn't look like the expected style that you would see in a Tudor home. Yeah, and honestly, 
Aaron had barely even closed on the house and we were already drawing floor plans. We were so excited. You know, it also meant a chance for us to expand our business to the suburbs, even though I was still in Brooklyn. And we were just excited to jump in and really transform this house and really make it look and feel like Aaron and also make it super functional and a place where she could raise her two kids. The first step that we had when it came to revamping the house is taking it from what happened with previous owners of the 80s and the 90s where they came in and tried to update a style from you know a house that was originally built in the 1930s um, and kind of give it some new life. Where most Tudor homes is really dark and moody, this actually has a lot of natural light. So the first thing that Lena and I really wanted to do was before moving in, we wanted to create you know a lot of light, a lot of um, you know updated you know items in here to really just not make it look so heavy, um, but then still give time to live in it and see how we were going to use the space because you know from coming from the city, it, it's a completely different way of living, and so we wanted to take the time to do a mild update, but also take a year and really live in the space and see what we wanted to do. I think there was certain aspects of the house that didn't function well. For example, the kitchen had an awkward layout. So it was it was angular, it was kind of a funny space, there was an awkward booth. And then the passageways from the kitchen to the dining space and the living room was a little bit closed off. So those were the things that we learned very quickly in the first year that that wasn't gonna work for Erin and her family. When I first bought the house was back in 2017 and the style was very like modern farmhouse, very light and airy. We did feel like the design trends were going a little bit moodier, a little more traditional, very natural color palettes. Um, so the new style is kind of going to like a modern cottage look. So we did do a recent facelift to kind of update and give like a refresh into this new style. So we're still keeping some of the traditional details and elements, but it's more updated and it's a lot more um, modern for the family. So the dining room is off of the living room as well as the kitchen. With the formality of the house, we wanted to still make it feel like it is a formal dining room. A lot of the, the new builds, it is like very open. You know, you have the dining space directly off of the kitchen, a family room right off of it. Um, but we wanted to keep the integrity of the house. But we still wanted to feel like it's a little bit more modernized. So where there used to be a door that would open both ways, a double-sided door, uh, we ended up creating a really big arched casement that still feels like it's original to the home, but functions for our family better. And then we wanted to also maintain all the architectural style, but we wanted to have like, once again, that really fun element. So Lena found this incredible wallpaper and I really feel like it just like grounded the entire space. Yeah, this is what's called a mural wallpaper. So it's very, very large scale and it's kind of like a pictorial of a scene. So you see, you know, the beautiful flowers, the birds. It's um, a very traditional wallpaper, but because it's oversized and overscaled, that's the unexpected moment. And that's the wow factor when you walk in and you just see these huge birds and peonies. And it's like a modern interpretation of like a chinoiserie. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's sometimes you will see like a bird's eye kind of staring at you and it kind of creeps you out a little, but a little it still has its moment. Yes. So we do, we do enjoy the space, but so we wanted to maintain the original corner built-in cabinets and we just gave it a refresh of paint to just really tie in the color of the beams. Um, but then the rest of the furniture, we wanted to still once again have that, that blend of not being so serious and so heavy. So we did tie in um, more of like a mid-century modern chair that has more of like a like a golden pecan finish and the cane backing just to kind of make it not feel like so heavy and so traditional um, but just adding like a little bit of like a masculine vibe with a more feminine wallpaper giving that nod to the tudor era if you see this rug this is an act actually an indoor outdoor rug which is great for dining rooms because um, it's very easy to clean up. You don't have to worry if you spill on it, very easy to clean. Um, but the checkerboard pattern is so traditional of British design, and so is the Tudor style of architecture. So by bringing this rug in, it's sort of a, an homage to the original architectural style of the home. That's really how Lena and I came together, is the, 
the philosophy of like livable luxury where at face value it looks like it's really put together it's really luxurious it might be you know incredibly expensive to to some people but in reality you know this is a really inexpensive indoor outdoor rug but no one would be the wiser but then at the same time it's you know our family can really live and function and we don't have to worry so much like we can just like be and just live and enjoy our time together I love the idea with a dining table of having the end chairs be a little bit different because it has to be more exciting, you know, to just be like, this is my chair and it's a race to the best chair for my husband, of which I always win. Um, so I love having the more like upholstered, you know, the bigger chairs at the end, really comfortable. You know, I'll find myself sometimes just sitting here with my laptop um, and just like working in the evenings. So it allows me to want to be in the space and be more comfortable, but at the same time, it, it really fills the space nicely by just having some like beefier, like nice upholstered chairs. And then behind it, this piece was the first, um, it's actually the first piece that I actually bought when we closed Pfeffer. on the house. Yeah. So this was from one of our vendors called Tritter Pfeffer. And it was like one of their new ones to the line. And it's funny because I picked this color, it was a custom finish before we even did anything else. And I actually think it looks so much better now than it did when I first bought it. But it basically stores all of our, you know, formal china, things that we need to hide, all the placemats. Um, and it's nicely tucked away in this like little window seat area. Um, so it's out of the way, but it still brings in some nice dimension with the lines. One of the things we tried to keep really consistent throughout the home is the color palette. So you're obviously seeing this beautiful coral, sort of pinky tone in here in the wallpaper, in the pillows, and then you see the same in the living room with the pillows and decor. So it, it was important for us to use sort of a more limited palette because it is an open space you can see from one room to the next. Um, so we brought in a lot of these kind of salmon-y tones and a lot of deep greens as well, and then of course neutrals. We love our neutrals. <laughs> And it's a really nice transitional color. So, you know, even seeing how it kind of flows from the living room into here where it does feel a little bit more feminine with the chinoiserie, you know, palette, then as it then goes into the kitchen, the, the colors just really flow nicely with the mixture of contrast and warm elements. This piece I love because it has the lantern aesthetic that you would see in a more traditional home, in a Tudor, but then it has that nice eclectic look of having the brass, almost like a Sputnik that's like interior of the lantern. And it brings in, once again, that little pop of masculine with a room that is much more feminine. So you get that nice eclectic push-pull, uh, which I think just makes it look interesting. And you know, being a designer, we always want to kind of push the uh, push the style, push the, you know, the look a little bit of like unexpected. Um, so we can just have fun with it. Yeah, this is actually um, a pendant that we've used a couple times. Um, we used it in another home, which was a Greek revival. It's very much um, a different style. And because it's a lantern, it lends itself to a lot of different styles. But I love how that, just that hit of brass in the center really makes it come to life. Our team is, is nine people, and we had input from a lot of our team members in working on this project, just like we would with any other client. And as Erin said, it's really hard to design for yourself. You get in your head, you start second guessing. So it was really nice to have our whole team be able to provide input, especially since it was such a personal project. Um, but I think an area where we definitely collaborated really well was the kitchen. It's incredibly functional, you know, having two young children, you know, Lena and my philosophy is very much on independence and fostering that uh, selfishly so I don't have to go and get a thing of string cheese or a cup of water every single five minutes. So it was a big deal for Lena and I to break down every detail in that kitchen to make sure that it's very functional, it's very, um, you know, I'm actually very short, I'm four foot ten. So, you know, making sure that everything is able for me to, to reach from like lower down so my kids can access everything themselves. So Lena helped me to really like finite every single detail and make sure that it was gonna function and adapt for our family.
So off of the formal dining room is the nice, beautiful arch that really combines the two spaces into the kitchen. Because it's not a, a new home that has you know, the, the family room that's off of the kitchen. So we wanted to still make it feel like it is nice and open and flows. So we took out the, uh, the double swing door and we created this moment. So as you come into the kitchen, it feels like they flow together really nicely with a focal point definitely being this wall with a stove and uh, the floating shelves to the side. So you can see the, the backsplash that Aaron chose is um, Calicata Gold Marble. And the reason we love this variety of marble is because it actually does have this beautiful gold vein veining. So it doesn't feel cold. Like some marble, you see it and it's very gray and white. Here you have a lot of variety and movement and it just keeps it really interesting, especially since it goes all the way up to the ceiling. And because we, you know, we really do use this kitchen, I have to be really careful with my countertops to make sure it's pristine. But we did decide to go with a quartz countertop just so we didn't have to worry about, you know, any staining or etching. So by having the natural marble on the backsplash, we're allowed to then have that beauty of the natural element, but then the function and ease of cleanability on the countertops itself. And then, you know, as the big focal point, I wanted to have a, a big, like, uh, 48 inch range. Um, so we got an Ilve range that has that nice, you know, trendy look of like that old world, um, you know, style. So it can look like I'm a master chef, but I'm not. So being the fact that I am short stature, um, you know, having like a lot of the tall upper cabinets that you used to see back in the day just doesn't function for me or my family. So we really wanted to opt for lower cabinets, lots of storage, so everything has function and its place, but then that allows us to open up the walls so that way we can have more decor. You know, I can still use it functionally, but it just feels a little lighter, airier, and it has a lot of character. So it just feels almost like it has a nice casual moment without just being walled -wall, wall cabinets of, you know, plates and dishes. Some of the accessories that we ended up putting out here have a lot of meaning to my family. Um, the art that's over there, the oil painting, um, my husband's grandmother actually thought that this was an antique and a real Rembrandt and even took it to Antique Roadshow to find out it is in fact not. And it was worth like a dollar. I'm pretty sure the frame is worth more than the print, but that had to make its way just so I can just have that, the nice family history of what could have been, but was not. I love that. <laughs> I didn't know that story. Yeah. <laughs> We wanted to put in a beverage center, uh, as well as mom wanted a coffee maker priorities. So that way my kids can come in, they can grab a yogurt, they can grab a bottle of water. Um, all of their water bottles and cups and plates are lower down in drawers, so it's really accessible to them. Um, especially now when you know the new refrigerators that are panel ready are pressurized, so it's really hard for them to open it. Um, as well as even reach, you know, the higher up shelves. So a big part of this was making sure that it was really efficient for my children. In turn is then very helpful for myself. And then because we have, you know, the, the function of these two appliances, we didn't want it to feel like it's just, you know, another kitchen appliance. So uh, our team came up with the idea of creating a gallery wall. And once again, this is that like modern cottage approach of feeling like, almost like an English countryside, having the different pieces of art um, because this is actually a TV. Uh, <laughs> happy 40th birthday, Andrew. So his whole thing, my husband, he really wanted a TV in the kitchen and I come from the era of, I don't want a TV in my kitchen in every room. So this was basically the, the compromise is having a Samsung frame TV, but then piecing it together with all the different pieces of art so it feels like it's just part of a collected art gallery. Uh, and so, you know, no one would be the wiser, uh, including my children who have no idea. Really? <laughs> yeah. You managed to hide it from yeah. them for that long? It's a need to know. <laughs> so when Erin first moved in, we knew that the first thing that she was gonna tackle was the kitchen renovation. This kitchen was renovated down to the studs. We've made some upgrades recently. Um, but the floor plan has remained the same. So um, when we initially looked at this kitchen, it had a banquette here, an eating banquette, in this sort of angled area. 
it felt very awkward. It, you couldn't really get in and out of it very easily. And the person who got in would essentially be stuck in there. Um, so it didn't flow well for our family and the island was undersized. It just didn't make a lot of sense. So we kind of re-envisioned this kitchen to be completely different. We really centered all of the family activity around the island. This is, serves as a prep space and a dining space. And it's really generously sized, so you can kind of accomplish all of your activities there. On this side, we have this beautiful brass sink that overlooks the backyard, which is a lovely way to appreciate the garden and also to let in natural light. So important in a kitchen. For all the dishes I'm not cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> For all the lack of dishwashing we do. <laughs> Paper plates are just as sufficient. Yes, they are. Um, but you know, it was it was a challenge to get to this point originally when Aaron first moved in, because there was when you have an angled wall situation like this, there's so many ways you can configure a space. Um, and we also had to contend with some structural issues. So where you see this big beam, on this side of the beam was an addition many decades ago. And on this side of the beam was the original home. So you start to see how a previous homeowner might have pieced this together and we just completely took it apart <laughs> and re-envisioned it in a new way. So part of the big kitchen renovation that was done was bringing in an addition. So this space did not exist when Aaron moved in. This is the mudroom and laundry room. Um, and it's a great space for Aaron's family to come in, drop off their things, backpacks, boots, all the kids stuff and equipment that we all have in our homes. Um, so she felt, and I felt it, it was very important to have a space where she could enter the home, feel organized, calm, get her Amazon packages, and then enter the beautiful kitchen space. Basically what Lena was saying is this was the original entry to the back of the house, being the fact that our driveway, everyone parks in the back where the carriage house is. So walking in, it would be layered with shoes to the side, backpacks on the floor. Um, you know, I'm very big into everything should have a place, you know, behind closed doors. Uh, so we can really function and live, but I don't need to see everything and it'll just give me anxiety. So this was a really big, important addition to us. And that's why we always say like, take the time to live in a home, really see how you're going to use it, how your family is going to function. Cause that's how you're going to get the best design. So we intentionally spent a year of seeing how we're going to really adapt into the space before we even broke ground on this area. So we knew walking into the space, we wanted to have a really cool um, Dutch door. Uh, so that way we could open up the top that's separate from the bottom and just feel just like very tranquil, very, you know, nostalgic. Um, feel the breeze. Feel the breeze. Um, so that way then when my kids come in, they all have their own cubby. So that way they can put their backpacks, their shoes, bulk storage above. You know, this really kind of framed out the wall so everything has a place for it to go and it doesn't just sit out on the floor. And then we created this other built-in cabinetry area so we have a bench seating so my kids can sit and take their shoes off. Um, we have different seasonal storage below. So we have one that's a summer side and the other is a winter side. But when you walk into the space, it almost feels like it is like a foyer. Like it yeah. doesn't feel like you're oh, walking yeah. into a mud room or walking into, you know, a laundry room. Like this is actually one of my favorite rooms of the entire house. It's just the unexpected. I, it makes me actually want to do laundry. So, <laughs> okay, let's not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite things about this space is just how kind of moody it feels, even though the walls are white. We did paint all of the cabinetry this dark green color. Benjamin Moore is our go-to, and this pewter green color is just lovely because it changes with the light. So right now we've got a lot of sunlight, feels a little more vibrant, but in the evenings and early morning, it, it just has a little bit more of a gray feel. So um, you get a lot of variety. And then you've got the wallpaper on the ceiling, which is so beautiful and delicate and dainty. And it's almost like 
a nod to the wallpaper in the dining room. It's a lot smaller scale, but it has the same motifs. So that's kind of how we brought cohesion through all the spaces. The other thing being that this is an addition and it's not original to the home is that this is one of the spaces that we actually did have to bring in a lot of detail. So we put in uh, shiplap in our phase two on the built-in here as well as on the back wall just so we have that architectural moment. Um, while we didn't want to have beams, we did draw your eye up to the angled ceiling with a tray. Um, and then as Lena was saying, you know, having that moment of kind of drawing your eye up to the higher ceilings, having the, the bird motif wallpaper, it really kind of brings that moody element uh, that we were really wanting to uh, capture. So like, I just, I love this space. I think it's like a really nice moment as you're walking in and it's also incredibly functional. So I think we work incredibly well together. Lena's background and my background were completely different. Um, I was an interior designer, you know, through college. That was my only career. So I had experience working with other firms. And before I met Lena, I had a firm of just me and an assistant. And she actually came on and started assisting me. Um, so we got to see how we worked together and how we, you know, supported one another, which was amazing. And Lena's background is in consulting and more of a corporate industry. Yeah. So where I lacked on that experience, she had tons of experience. So it was just like the perfect blend. Yeah, and, and as you said, it, it was a little serendipitous because we were also going through a huge transformation, which was becoming new moms. So we were really there to support each other. And we really wanted to build a business that you know, supports other women and we've grown it in that model. And I think that's been a huge shared goal for us. And I think the big thing that is different is there's so many interior design companies and we came together with a philosophy of livable luxury. So, you know, after seeing all of our friends who are having babies, you know, starting this new transition of, you know, having kids and wanting to buy their first home and, they didn't know how to invest and how to make it functional. And they were afraid that everything was just gonna get destroyed. So they ended up having completely empty rooms with the, the mindset of later when our kids are older, we'll invest. And we're like, there has to be a better way. So we put our, our brains together and came up with the idea of designing with a lot of you know, function, a lot of thought, you know, using durable materials but it's in a way that you don't see it. it. You don't have Pottery Barn storage and everything concealed and vinyl or leather everywhere. It's designed thoughtfully, so that way it can live to the messes of family living. We really don't want to just design for Instagram. We want to design for real life, because ultimately when we leave our clients' homes, they're gonna live there for a long time and hopefully enjoy the space. So. It's not just about making it beautiful, it's also about making it functional and sustainable over time. So going up the stairs, we do have a landing and an interesting uh, part of this design is when we first bought the house, there was actually two areas of stairs. So we created this arch and decided to basically block in the stairs because they were really narrow and really steep and they went right to the kitchen which we didn't feel like we really needed. Um, so we did create this nice like landing moment uh, where we have bookshelves. It kind of is a nice visual as you're coming up to the space as this is the, the primary bedroom landing and floor area. And then there's another few stairs up that goes to the kids area. So it kind of creates a nice landing, a nice moment as you're then going into the primary bedroom. So this is my primary bedroom. Uh, we did a lot of details into the space. Uh, it's actually a very, very big room. It's about 25 feet wide. So coming from New York City, having a much smaller bedroom space, uh, I basically lived in like a full size or a queen size bed for the entire time until I basically moved here. But because it has really high ceilings as well, it was really important for us to bring in um, a nice poster bed. Um, I always feel like it's a really nice moment to just kind of draw your eye up to once again, like the cool architectural element of the space. And then actually, if you follow the line of the bed, you see this beautiful statement chandelier, which is relatively modern for 
a traditional home. And it, again, adds that unexpected element. So when we're dealing with a house that has a lot of architectural elements, uh, we might not need to add a lot of details. But in the master bedroom, I really wanted to have wallpaper. I felt like it kind of created a nice, like, cozy environment. Um, but because we had really high ceilings and the fact that I am an interior designer, I didn't want to select a wallpaper that I would get tired of. Um, so it was really important for me to find one that felt just like very calm, relaxing. This is kind of my retreat away from, you know, a busy day. So Lena and I selected this wallpaper, which is really interesting because it's a, a floral pattern that basically is from uh, the ground all the way up about two thirds. And then the rest of it is wallpaper up to the ceiling. So it actually has this look of being like a hand stencil design, even though it's actually wallpaper. But it's a really neutral, warm color, so I don't feel like I'm going to get tired of it. So I love this little vignette over here. We're bringing in really rich tones of wood and rattan. Um, Again, we were dealing with the same issue of plaster walls, so very hard to hardwire new lights. Um, so we opted for a plug-in sconce, great solution for when hard hardwiring is a challenge. And I just love how it all came together. You know, this is super functional as a reading light. It's super decorative, adds dimension to the wall, and just the rich tones against this very soft, neutral background. It's just stunning. Being the fact that we have, you know, a lot of the contrast that's in the furniture, we wanted to go like light and neutral for the rug. So it's a nice plush color, has like a nice like wool, um, you know, material to it. So it's very durable. Uh, my dog has been challenging me on it. So far I have one, but we shall see. But it just really grounds the furniture together really nicely because it is a very big oversized space. So having a larger primary bedroom, I love the idea of having the little moments of just kind of, you know, not just being about like the main pieces, but having a seating area. Um, we went back and forth and we were designing the room of whether or not I was going to have a reading nook, whether I was going to have like a desk, but I didn't want to have an area where I thought of work while I was relaxing in kind of my own personal oasis. So we opted to do a really beautiful deep chaise lounge. Um, like I said, I'm a really big reader. So, I mean, how amazing is this to have this moment of a reading area in front of the Juliet balcony, which is functional. Um, so, you know, on a beautiful day, you know, I can sit here and, you know, just like be and just relax and just, you know, embrace this incredible house. Um, and then we wanted to bring in a lot of natural light. So a really big oversized um, gilded brass mirror that just reflects really nicely. So it just really kind of caps this area because having the wallpaper, we didn't feel like we needed to have artwork. You know, the wallpaper really acts as the artwork. Uh, so having these layers is really the moments that we wanted to incorporate. To balance out the contrast that we wanted to incorporate in the space of the iron poster bed, we really wanted to have another little pop of black. So this is a marble side table. We love the fact that it has like this really cool intricate shape. Um, but it's a perfect place for me to, you know, sit in the morning and have coffee, uh, you know, read a book, you know, look out and just kind of enjoy my day. Um, but once again, this really is that masculine piece that balances out the feminine design of the wallpaper. One thing that um, you might be noticing in the space is that it's a lot of neutrals. It's neutral upon neutral upon neutral. But the reason it's a really successful design is because each of the pieces and textures are all very different. So here, for example, you've got the pleated shade. Here you have this lovely, very matte finished ceramic texture. And then over here on the chaise lounge, again, it's neutrals, but you've got, you know, the Mongolian fur, you've got a woven, almost like a linen style fabric, and then the more textured fabrics over here. So to me, that layering of different textures and tones all in the neutral family is the key to designing neutral spaces. And it also creates like a timeless balance. So, you know, you don't have to have a pop of color that you might get tired of over time. You can go very neutral and light and airy, but you're using the different layers and textures to create that interest. When it comes to you know designing our primary bedroom, um, you know some people are pro TV and some people are anti TV. 
Uh, my husband and I, we love nothing more than to watch Netflix in bed. Uh, so we wanted to embrace it. You know, this is a space we really live in. Um, so we do have a TV that's on top of the cabinet, but we ended up picking one that has a really cool texture once again, also has contrast. So when the TV is sitting on top of it, it is more cohesive with the overall color. So it doesn't stand out and it's not too offensive um, because the way our layout is, is it is in front of a window, which is not my, my first choice, but you know, all things considered, this still is our house. We need to live in it and it has to function for us. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we do not have an, a, uh, a gym in our house. So we ended up wanting to pick um, an item that is, once again, it's gonna help with a healthy lifestyle. So we do work out in our bedroom. Um, this contains all of our weights. So, you know, it kind of, once again, it is, it is what it is, but we're able to really use the space and not have to be so serious. It's not, you know, always on the cover of a magazine. It is, but you know, it still, it works for us and that's okay. So at Curated Nest, we love designing with plants. I think plants are such an important uh, reminder of nature in our day-to-day -day lives and they just liven up a space um, and add kind of a sculptural element as well as softness. So um, this is a faux olive tree. These days you can get really good uh, faux plants and uh, we are very proud of them <laughs> because neither of us have a green thumb. So whether you like to be your own plant parent or whether you're just not not going to do that, great, uh, a great option is, is faux greenery. The cool thing about this house is all the different nooks and crannies, um, but when we didn't have this here and you walked in, the window sat very high up and there's actually a, uh, a radiator that's directly behind it. So I wanted to create something that didn't make it look like, you know, if it was a window seat, the window would be too high up, like the proportion would be completely off. So I decided to create a custom um, chest of drawers that really looks like it's built into the space. Um, so we even capped out the side to work with uh, the shoe molding. And this functions incredibly well for us. And it also doesn't draw your eye to the fact that architecturally the window is higher up. And then directly above it, once again, keeping with the style of the house is a little niche that uh, will forever just be a dust collector. This bed was probably the thing I was most excited for and this renovation. Um, I've never had a king size bed, so this was a big deal for me. Um, I always say that it's, I, I really just wanna make like snow angels in my bed. Um, and so I finally got it. Um, one of the things we really always explain to our clients is being the fact that you are in your bed for basically half of your day is to really invest in it. So, you know, go to the mattress store, go and lay on all the mattresses, see what is comfortable, you know, whether you're a back sleeper or a side sleeper, um, you know, invest in really nice linens, like splurge and go for the good stuff because it really does make a difference. You know, I always say that it's like the, this era of my life is I just wanna be cozy. Like that's really what is important to me. Uh, so, you know, having the really nice linens, you know, having, the you know the really nice like down insert cozy throws like weighted blankets like that's just like that's my love language uh so that was really important putting this design together and then having you know a few decorative pillows having the tassels having the little moments without being heavy or fussy um just really it makes me happy this is the place that i want to be in at the end of the day you know i have space for my kids to sit and read in bed with me and it just it warms my heart Fun tidbit, Erin uh, and I found this really, really long lumbar pillow a long time ago, actually, at, um, at a trade show in North Carolina. And it was originally intended for her daughter's bed. Um, and now it's here. It's been commandeered. It's been commandeered, <laughs> yes. Um, so it's, it's an example of, look, this was an investment pillow. It was expensive. It's a very luxurious fabric, but it was worth it because it has not a blemish on it. It's lasted a few years with a young child and now it's on her bed and it is so cozy to cuddle up with. So worth it. Erin's absolutely right. Splurge on your bedding, splurge on your mattress. It's... It's wow. everything.
so originally when we bought the house, when we did our addition and the kitchen, that was really our phase one. Uh, we were not anticipating redoing our primary bathroom, but the there is a shared wall with the kitchen, even though we are on the second floor. So when they ripped everything out down to studs, uh, they basically, I got a call and they said that massive amounts of water damage. Previous owner had a hot tub pushed up against the wall that was being used as a shower base. Uh, and basically it was just 40 years of water that was going down and they were like, any minute you're gonna just fall through the floor. So they were like, you have until this evening to get all your stuff out. And I had like two days to put together a design for the space. So I ended up picking, you know, very timeless marble, really going with like a, a brick pattern with a mosaic on the floor, just so that way then later on, I could really work to kind of figure out what the overall aesthetic of the house is gonna be in here. Um, we did commandeer some of the space from the hallway where the stairs used to be. Um, so that way it did create a nice big walk-in shower that now doubles as a steam shower. Um, but then later on, fast forward with Lena and myself, we created um, a much like cozier, richer vibe. Uh, we repainted the vanity just to kind of once again, bring some depth, bring some contrast, um, and then layers of texture with the mirror. So I think now it feels like me. It feels like, you know, a place that I really want to be as opposed to, you know, having to rush and make decisions, um, which is always, you know, not how you want to go about your design, but unfortunately that was necessity. So what's my favorite thing about this house? Um, I love this house. I think it's absolutely magical. It sort of transports you to another time in that it really does have a fairy tale sort of feel. Um, I too love the architecture of this home. I think it's really unique. It adds tons of character. It's hard to buy character, you know, and this home came with all the character. Um, and it, it has so much you know, interesting nooks and crannies and beams and details that we really didn't want to over embellish it. We wanted to let the, the Tudor style really shine and more like complement it versus and enhance it um, versus overshadow it with um, a lot of design elements. So I think we've done that really successfully by integrating a lot of traditional uh, furnishings and finishes but also bringing in some really cool contemporary pieces, which we'll show you. I think for me, the favorite would have to be the architecture of the home. Uh, it's just so unique. There's, like I said, there's a round turret at the front that just screams like a Romeo and Juliet kind of experience. There's a carriage house in the back that my husband can work in. Um, it's just a magical setting that I haven't been able to find anywhere else. And it's cozy, you know, we can be together as a family, um, but we have a lot of land, so it gives my kids a lot of independence. Um, but yeah, for me, I'd have to say it's the overall architecture. So going up the stairs, this is now my kids' floor. So it has a nice separation without being too far away from where I'm sleeping. So at the top of the stairs, we have my two kids' bedrooms. Originally, there was a, a door that went to a gigantic room that theoretically should have been a master bedroom, but it didn't have a bathroom that was attached to it. So we did keep our primary bedroom on its own floor, um, but we did separate the two rooms. One of them is a portion that is over the, the turret, the round area of the house. Uh, and we created that as a workout space but uh, in our next phase is actually gonna be created to a uh, really cool, just like a reading room, uh, because that's, once again, as you start living in the house, you see how you're adapting, you see how you're using the space and how it's growing with your family. And that's kind of the next phase in our life is we wanna be together, we wanna read and be cozy. And what cooler place than to have, you know, we're gonna have a, a hidden bookshelf that is like a secret door that goes to a really intricate, you know, round room. It's like, how cool is that experience? That was the one thing her husband asked for. The he, one thing, sorry, he, Andrew. He gave no input otherwise. He wants a secret door. And we're on board. We're so, on board for secret door. So stay tuned. <laughs> yes, that's next. Never ending. So my son really wanted to be a part of the design of his space. He's nine going on 10. And I wanted to create an area where 
you know, it feels like a space that he is proud of, you know, one where he's now having sleepovers. He wants to bring his friends over and play and not feel like it's, you know, a baby's room. Uh, he's very much into baseball. And so he created a space that he can really grow into. Um, we're very big on day beds, twin beds with children because it opens up the space on the floor. Uh, so that way he can, you know, he can still pull out Legos or, you know, whatever he wants. He could lay out and kind of create a, uh, you know, floor is lava, if you will. But all the pieces are really going to grow with him all the way through his teen years. So we created a, a desk area with a LED baseball um, so he can put that on and just feel, you know, like it has like a cool element. Um, and we wanted to incorporate the things that are important to him. You know, it's not about me. It's, this is his space. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we were, you know, capturing a style that we were also still proud of. Um, and it still goes with everything that, you know, we designed for our clients uh, with his own personal twist. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't want this to feel like a kitschy baseball explosion. <laughs> we still wanted it to have a cool style. So we sort of embraced this like vintage Americana kind of vibe where we brought in some of the, the older imagery that you see from baseball in the 40s and 50s, just bringing in that little bit of history. And then you can see the accessories are all very boyish, a lot of leather, a lot of rich tans and navies. And it just feels like something that will grow with him. And it kind of harkens back to the old sort of plaid uh, bedrooms you would see for boys back in the day. And this is just a wonderfully updated version of it. So with kids rooms, we don't really want to go and, and select pieces of furniture that is like geared towards children. Um, you know, there's the safety aspect that's involved, but you know, any dresser can be bolted to a wall, bookshelves can be bolted. Um, but we really wanted to bring in pieces that can grow with him. It's a place that, you know, I even want to be, you know, hanging out in. So, you know, we gave him like this really cool, like leather sling back chair with the iron details, you know, and seeing how that even incorporates to the dresser that has a similar leather and iron detail. So by no means are they matchy matchy, but the elements flow around the room really nicely, but it doesn't feel heavy or stuffy. Um, you know, and even having these little moments where it doesn't look too young or, or youthful, but it's thematic. So these are three patents for baseball. You have a baseball bat, a ball, and a mitt. So, you know, my, my son loves history. He loves, you know, to read about like all the different, you know, baseball fields, the ins and the outs of statistics. So this is totally up his alley, um, while it also just kind of goes with the overall style. Another thing I love about this space is because we opted for a day bed, it kind of creates sort of like a living room feeling. Like the bed doesn't necessarily scream bed. It's, it's very cozy, it's very layered. You can sit, you can lay down, you can curl up. It and then- It has like a sofa vibe. It has a sofa yeah. vibe, yeah. And then that chair, that chair is so comfortable. <laughs> I'm very jealous that Erin has it in her house. I remember when we saw that chair at um, a trade show, I was pregnant, I was six months pregnant, and I literally could not get out of that chair. <laughs> Aaron had to- like, I think you had to like two hand pull you out. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're happy that we gave him such a cozy little reading nook. So this was a trickier room I always felt, yeah. um, just because if you were to have a bed on the wall, there isn't really a great space for it, aside from where the window is. So we decided by using the architecture and the angles of the ceiling, it made more sense to have a bed tucked nicely in the window with the panels to the side, and then have two tall um, bookshelves. And that really helped to draw your eye up because this ceiling is actually relatively low. Um, and there's no interesting architectural elements aside from the original iron windows. Um, so I really like how this turned out where it now kind of feels like it has a purpose um, and it really opens up the space. Uh, so that way, like my son and my daughter, they can, you know, hang out together and read or play games. So it's worked out really well. There is a shared bathroom for my son and daughter that's on their floor. Um, this was one of those uh, full gut renovations. Um, and we're talking like all plumbing, everything moved to different locations. Um, for some reason, I guess in the 80s, they thought it was a great idea to walk in and just stare at a toilet. 
um, and then everything else was pushed to the side wall. So we decided to just completely revise the entire layout. Um, so we now have a really functional oversized vanity to the side. Uh, so both of my kids can brush their teeth at the same time with a really wide sink. Uh, we moved the toilet to the side of that. And then we have this really nice, bright, open um, shower bath combo. Um, and now you really, you see the natural light that's coming through. It doesn't feel dark. Um, but once again, we wanted to add contrast. So the really cool element that we wanted to incorporate here is the tile on the floor, which did feel like, once again, it goes with the idea of a Tudor house. Um, it has like a really intricate pattern that you might see in, in tile from back then. Um, and we wanted to also have a nice nook on the back wall where they can have their soaps and actually, usually they, they have toys on there as well. So that way they can just play in the shower. Um, and yeah, it functions incredibly well for, for them, even though somehow my daughter magically always wants to come to my shower. So funny how that happens. Steam shower. <laughs> Steam shower. She's already a diva, so. So I think the tile work in this bathroom is really fun. Um, obviously the floor is very much a bold statement. So typically when we go with a bold surface, the other surface is more toned down. So this tile here, it's called a Zellige tile. Um, love this for its fun sort of ripply texture. It adds a nice shine and a lot of variety. So we chose to do it instead of in a traditional bricklay, we did a vertical bricklay pattern, which kind of draws your eye up and adds light. And then in this really tall niche, um, this was an opportunity to add a little bit of uh, a punchy moment. And this is where we incorporated the same tile as the floor. So there's still, you know, a lot of visual interest in this bathroom. For me, home definitely means a place that I can leave a busy day, just relax, be true to myself, uh, be with my family. I don't want them to feel like they can't live in a space, you know, feel like things are too precious. You know, they're going to grow up so fast and I want to be able to have those moments with them in the house where everyone feels comfortable, we can be together as a family. Um, and so for me, it's like, I, I want a space where we can just be, we can live and just feel very comfortable. Yeah, I, I would say, what does home mean to me? I think family is the first word that comes to mind. Um, I want a comfortable place for, to raise my kids. But I also want it to be low maintenance. And I want it to be a safe space for me to retreat to after, after work and after the stresses of life. Um, and I want it to be a place to entertain. I personally, I love to entertain. She's the extrovert, I'm the introvert. Yes. <laughs> I want to just lock the doors and just kind of be and read in my dark corner and she loves to entertain. Yes. So she's the yin to my yang. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not fancy about it, but I do like having a big kitchen and I love having all the stemware um, and all the fun little entertaining things. And it's rare that I break them all out at once, but um, I do love having friends and family over and just sharing time with them and not necessarily having a structured activity, just having a home where you can really relax, where there's all sorts of little spots um, for different things. Cozy nooks. Yes. Cozy nooks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.